Welcome back YouTube. I am half naked again today, which means we're going to be talking about some more really important stuff. Today I'm going to share with you the biggest mistakes that I see people making with their squat technique that often leads to butt wink in the bottom of a squat, feeling your lower back taking over and fatiguing first in any kind of squat pattern, or having issues with both hitting proper depth and getting as much as you can out of your glutes, your quads and your adductors in a squat exercise. I can almost guarantee that if you're having issues with depth, butt wink or your lower back taking over, you'll be making this mistake with your squats. I'll also share with you my squat technique checklist at the end of the video to get you squatting as optimally as possible for your personal structure and mobility. While I personally don't do a lot of barbell squatting anymore in my own training, I still do see barbell back squats as a useful exercise and one that many people will be using in their workouts. So it's important for us to get a good handle on fixing your technique and eliminating common issues like butt wink at the bottom of a squat to improve your overall strength in the exercise. Now, these cues I'm going to give you will also apply to all squatting movements, whether it's using a machine-based squat or a single leg split squat or lunge variation as well. First, I am curious to know, how many of you regularly perform barbell back squats in your programming? And if so, do you struggle with butt wink, hitting depth in the squat, or your lower back fatiguing through squat exercises? Drop me a comment below to let me know. And while you're at it, please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so you can stay up to date with all of my content. It might not seem like much on your part, but this channel has seen some crazy amounts of growth since I first started posting regularly just a couple of months ago. And the more growth that this channel gets, the more I can continue to push out free content just like this for you. Anyway, let's get stuck straight into the content, shall we? The first thing that we need to wrap our heads around is what am I really talking about when I talk about depth in a squat? Hitting depth is something that typically means different things for different people, depending on your training goal. For example, a powerlifter who really is the only athlete who has to do a barbell back squat in competition only has to squat down until their hip crease here is just below their knee, or to what is termed parallel depth. Any lower is perfectly fine as well, but it doesn't give them bonus points in their scoring or judging. And if anything, this may actually limit how much weight they're able to lift in the sport if they go any lower, because that increases the range of motion that they have to work through. But what about non-power lifters? For an Olympic lifter, or maybe even a CrossFit athlete, they might need to be able to get even more depth where their hip crease extends far lower than their knees to allow them to get under the bar on the snatch and the clean and jerk exercises. But for the majority of us who aren't power lifters or CrossFitters or Olympic lifters, what sort of depth should we be aiming for? Well, I would now start to look at the goal behind why we're squatting in the first place. And I'd assume that it's being used as a way to build strength or muscle through the lower body. As such, the best way to do this is to take the muscles of the lower body through as much of a range of motion as possible. For the quads, the front of the legs here, this means getting into as deep a degree of knee bend as possible, as this is really important for taking these muscles here through to a complete stretch. And for the glutes and adductors, this means getting into as much hip flexion as possible, as that takes those muscles into their complete stretch position as well. Now, the next important point here is to understand the difference between actively accessing a range of motion or passively letting the weights push you into position. So if I take this barbell here, we take a look at how I squat. When I squat down, if I maintain this neutral spine, my knees are now bent as far as possible whilst my hips are in a flex position. Now, I'm maintaining active tension through all of my working muscles in the movements. If I was to now relax instead, you'll see that I've got even more range of motion, but now my body is sinking into range of motion that is beyond what my muscles and nervous system can coordinate. So yes, the bar's gone lower, but I'm not actually putting any more stimulus onto my muscles. And if anything, I'm putting more stress onto my joints and other structures that are not what I want from the exercise. So if you look at my bum when I get down into that relaxed position there, you'll see what is classically called butt wink. 
where as I descend down past a certain range, I lose the ability to stabilize my pelvis and it tucks under. Now, in its extremes, this can cause a rounding to the lower back, which may increase the pressure that's placed through it. But what it may also be doing is removing the stimulus from my glutes and adductors. It could also increase the strain through my lower back and erectors, and is a common reason why people tend to feel their lower back after using a lot of squatting exercises. So let me put this down for a sec. Now, whether or not butt wink is actually bad is still debated a lot in the strength training community. And so that's really something I want to be unpacking today. But what I have found is that in the majority of people who do have butt wink, once they start to address what I'm going to teach you guys in this video here, they're able to eliminate that butt wink in their squat most of the time, and their strength in their squatting and their leg development starts to improve dramatically. So the biggest mistake that I see people making is they're not addressing the root cause to their issues when it comes to hitting squat depth or improving their range of motion. I'm sure you've done something like this before. You've noticed that you feel tight or that you can't get into the range of motion you want for your squat, whether it's for your sport of powerlifting or Olympic lifting or crossfitting or simply taking your muscles through as much range of motion as possible to be able to train them sufficiently. So then, you look at some stretches, or mobility drills, or different activations, and then you go spend a great deal of time pre-workout doing a bunch of hip flexor or hamstring stretches, or some kind of glute activations with bands, or maybe you've gone and spent some time foam rolling, or seeing some kind of physical therapist to release these tight muscles. Now, usually what happens is, you do whatever it may be. Then you've gone to squat and found it was better afterwards. But then, after a short period of time, whether it was within that session itself, or within a couple of days, you find yourself all bound up and tight all over again. The reason this happens is because you haven't done anything to address the root cause behind your mobility issues. And this is what brings us to the biggest mistake that I see people making with their squat technique. They're not paying attention to what they're doing at the top of the squat and simply focus on their inability to hit depth at the bottom of the squat exercise. So let's take a look at this again with the bar. So, if, we, if I start in the position at the top, like this, with an overarch in my back, as I descend lower and lower and lower, it's more likely I'm gonna run out of room in my hips and start to hit my limit with my range of motion. And I'll start to shift to other areas like my lower back instead of moving as efficiently as possible. There are a few different things that I see people doing here at the top that is messing with their ability to get deep. It's usually a combination of one of these three things. Taking a deep breath into their chest, arching their back, and artificially shoving their hips back as much as possible, like this. These are all really commonly used technique cues. I'm sure you've all heard them before. Chest up, arch your back, push your bum back, or push through your heels, or any other combination of those kinds of cues. Taken together, all of these things push my spine into really large degrees of extension, while pushing my hips back into this flexed and tilted position. Here, my hamstrings, glutes, and adductors are put into a pre-tension state, as if they've been pulled taut. And as I start going to squat, they're going to reach their range of motion limit quite early. Then, as I start to reach the depth that I want to get, they start to pull my bum under, as they don't have any more slack to give. And that's what we call butt wink. Whew. Now, instead of stretching or mobilizing, or saying it's because your glutes aren't active, or that your hip flexors are too tight and inhibiting the function, or switching off your glutes, we should be addressing the technique from the top. So instead of starting up like this, we should focus on trying to maintain more of an even stack of our rib cage over our pelvis and shifting everything as one cohesive unit and not separating the movements by shoving the hips back excessively. So as I do this with these two stacked here, see I'm able to maintain a neutral spine through the entire range of motion and comfortably get into the range of motion that I want without going into butt wink. It's not wrong to take a big breath in, 
or to even breathe into your chest. Just make sure that when you do this, you're not making the common fault of allowing it to alter your position and shifting you into this less advantageous position to be squatting from. I personally find it helps to initially cue nasal breathing for at least a few sets or a few workouts to get used to the feeling of creating more expansion through your midsection and your diaphragm as opposed to lifting up through the chest. Another cue that I find useful is to try not thinking about lifting your chest up, which I see as a very, very, very overused cue, but instead thinking about elongating your spine or reaching the crown of your head here to the ceiling as if you're being pulled tall by a puppet master. Both of these cues, whether it's chest up or elongating the spine, do result in a slight rising through your chest, but cueing chest up often leads to extending the spine and overarching through the back, whilst the elongating or puppet master cue tends to maintain the pelvis and ribcage alignment that carries over better to your squat depth. Now, when it comes to pushing your hips back, I think this one gets overdone a fair bit because people think, that, or people are trying to sink more into their heels or have to try to get more out of their glutes. Again, this is another really common misconception of training. Your weight should be evenly distributed for the most part through your entire foot, not biasing more towards your heels or your toes. Pushing more through your heels though will stop you from being able to put enough pressure through the front or the ball of your foot which will limit how much range you're able to get at the ankle joints, which, without going too far off tangent, is a big reason why people tend to suffer from ankle mobility issues, in my experience. So instead of thinking hips back, or whether to bend through the knees or the hips first, don't think about it at all, and just think about squatting or sitting down. Let your nervous system then coordinate whether it wants to shoot your hips back or bend through the knees first, or do a combination of both. The position of the bar on your back will largely dictate where you go, where if you have a lower bar position, such as that used by most power lifters, you'll naturally tend to shift back through the hips first. Whereas if you have a higher bar position, more like an Olympic lifter, or even at the front of your body in a front squat, you'll tend to squat with a bit more knee bend, or a blend of both knee bend and hip hinging at the same time. But really, don't worry about any of that. Keep it simple. Set yourself up properly at the top of the movement with your pelvis and breath. So pelvis stacked and breathe just through your nose to begin with and you'll find it much easier to hit the range of motion that you want. All right, so with those big fundamentals addressed, let's take a look through my squat technique checklist for squatting. First, I think about the stance that I'm taking. For the most part, I don't overthink this and I let comfort dictate it more than anything else. Often it helps take a few jumps up on the spot or to set yourself up as if you're about to take a big leap forwards. You'll find that your body naturally takes its strongest and most comfortable stance by doing this. And this can serve as a good rough start point for your stance. You might want to try adjusting a little bit wider or a little bit narrower or a bit more rotated out or in from here. But for the most part, this stance of readiness is probably going to be close to the best position for you. Now, depending on your structure, you might need to use a heel elevation as well to be able to comfortably hit depth in a squat. While many people can definitely afford to spend a lot of time working more on their mobility through their hips and ankles, there are just as many people out there who are simply not built to squat to depth with load on their back with a barbell whilst maintaining good technique. And it's all due to their bone structure, not their actual mobility where people with relatively shorter torsos and longer femurs or upper leg bone may struggle to hit full range of motion. I spoke about this a little bit more in another video that I'll leave a link to up here in the corner so you can see a direct comparison between myself and my training partner, Sherol, where we are both the same height, but we have different torso and leg lengths, which play into our overall stance and our ability to hit depth comfortably in a squat. Again, I really want to stress this point because I think it's very poorly understood and, that, and the point is that if you have taken this comfortable stance and you find you're still not able to, take, to hit the depth that you want, don't be afraid to experiment with a slight heel elevation. It's not wrong and it's not cheating. 
it could very well be the smartest thing you do to take your own personal structure into consideration instead of trying to copy some random gold standard that you see on YouTube from somebody who is completely differently built to you and your structure. Just keep in mind that there is a point where you can elevate the heels too much. This is where you start to lose the overall stability and balance by having too much of your weight shifted forwards onto your toes from the heel rise. So if you find yourself having to get into this kind of elevated position where you really excessively hop up onto your toes to be able to hit depth in a squat, then that should be a signal to you that perhaps the barbell back squat isn't the best movement for you right now and there are far better alternatives for you to work with instead. Okay, so after we've found our stance, after all that preamble, next we're going to set ourselves up underneath the bar. So gripping tightly, I want to think about that puppet master elongating me through my spine and pulling my armpits down towards my pelvis. This helps me to engage the muscles of my back without creating a great deal of extra extension through my spine. Next, I'm going to make sure my pelvis stays stacked under my rib cage, and I'm going to take that big breath in. Here, I'm going to do it through my nose, but you can over time work to breathe in more through your mouth if you want to, just as long as it doesn't change your pelvis position at the top of the movement here. So, inhale, I'm going to descend down into the squat and stand straight back up. Simple as that. You see, once you've taken care of the two of the big concerns there with your stance and your pelvis position, you can remove a lot of the overused and unnecessary cues that you often see being tossed around with uh, squatting. Squatting itself should be a relatively simple concept, but over time, seen it become something overly complex that has left people a lot more confused and, for the most part, squatting with worse technique and overall performance. So there you go, guys, a quick crash course in squat depth and my checklist to get you squatting better. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you're going to try these techniques out, let me know how you go with them. And if you have any other questions, drop them down below. Thank you all for sticking around to the end of this video. I'm going to put this barbell down now so I don't die. And I'll see you all next time.